When it comes to a dog's safety during the Iditarod Trail sled dog race, there are two distinct sides. Those who believe racing is what Alaskan Huskies are bred to do. These dogs love what they do. They just live to, to run and they really enjoy it and they work as a pack and as a team. They're probably the most incredible athletes in the world and um, they, you know, when they're racing, they're, they'll, they'll get tired. There's no question that they'll get tired at the end of the day, running a hundred or more miles a day, but they're not made to do it. I mean, they're not pushed or forced in any way. Um, there's nothing you could do to make a dog run. It's, it's their own will. The things we always hear is they're too skinny. Well, have you ever seen a marathon runner that has an ounce of fat or an Olympic athlete that is chubby, not in shape? These guys are Olympic athletes in my mind. And those who think it's animal abuse. The Iditarod really is nothing but a death race for dogs. If you think a dog having bloody paws and dying of uh, hypothermia and getting gastric infections and having ulcers uh, is something that is exciting and romantic, go for it. Uh, really, it's just like a, a dog fighting in the north as far as, as far as we're concerned. But regardless of your position, the dogs face undeniably harsh physical and mental conditions as well as the extreme environment on the trail. I think most of the injuries that I see is a very common wrist injury. Um, from running, they'll get some swelling in their wrists, and it's painful. And when a dog has is, is got a painful wrist, they're, they're not going to run, so a lot of mushers will drop them. But for the most part, it's, it's skeletal muscle and joint injuries that we see that require two days to two weeks to recover, and then the dogs are usually raring to go again. They're fine with the cold. If there's wind out there, the mushers will put a coat on them. And all the dogs wear booties to keep their feet protected, not to keep them warm, but to keep them protected from abrasion on really cold snow. According to the People for Ethical Treatment of Animals, other complications dogs might experience during Alaska's rugged 1,100-mile trek are hypothermia, pneumonia, lung damage, exhaustion, dehydration, diarrhea, stomach ulcers, and stress along with a host of other problems. I know the mushers in the long term appreciate that they have a healthy dog that they don't have to worry too much about out there. Nobody wants to get a dog sick on the trail and at the very worst die. But that's the reality. There's a thing called life and death and it just happens. It's, it's a course. But, but in reality, these athletes have probably, I would say, one of the most um, one of the most caring safety nets I've ever seen in my life. Statistics on dog deaths since the Iditarod began in 1973 are incomplete since records haven't always been kept. But according to an Anchorage Daily News report in 1997, 107 dogs had died during the Iditarod through that particular year. These numbers don't include deaths that occurred during training or after the race. The Sled Dog Action Coalition's website states that to date, about 136 dogs have died since the race began. That includes three from this year's race, where one died from aspiration pneumonia, the other after being hit and killed by a snow machiner, and the third cause of death has yet to be determined. And while Iditarod officials insist the dogs get some of the best veterinary care in the world, like thorough checkups before the race and some 10,000 exams at the checkpoints, they do acknowledge the dangers the animals face. We have never lost a human in this race, um, never. Uh, unfortunately, we have lost um, uh, canine athletes in this race. It's something we take extremely seriously. It doesn't feel right unless we, we come home with all of the members of all of the teams. Does that happen? It has, yes. I can't remember the year, but, but uh, that has happened. Aside from the possible medical problems ailing the animals, there have been occasional reports of abuse by owners. But like anything, there are some bad apples out there. People may not realize that every single year dogs die in the Iditarod. In addition to the dogs that die in the race, there are countless dogs who are killed by their mushers because they're not fast enough to make the cut. So there's blood all over the place in this, uh, in this uh, uh, annual event, and it really, really needs to stop. According to an Iditarod press release, the most recent report of animal abuse during the race came during the 2007 Iditarod, where witnesses at one of the checkpoints accused musher Rami Brooks of kicking and punching his dogs and hitting them with a ski pole when they refused to leave the checkpoint. Brooks denies the more serious allegations, but does acknowledge spanking the dogs and his team. On March 17, 2007, a three-member panel of race judges disqualified Brooks from the 07 race. He was also suspended from running the Iditarod for two years, followed by three years of probation. 
For Discovery News, I'm Casey D. Gardner.